Hey folks, welcome back to Eigen Designs. I'm your host, Mark, and in today's video, I'm gonna be using the rest of my wing gay along with my CNC to create a three-dimensional wooden gearbox. And I'll be constructing this by cutting out individual pieces using my CNC and then stacking them up on top of one another to create a three-dimensional shape. Now, this individual gear shape may not interest you, but the possibilities of using this type of an approach to create a box or really get your gears turning about what else is possible. So if you want to see how I built this, then stay tuned and find out. I continue to look for creative ways to use my CNC, whether it be cutting a juice groove in a cutting board or flattening a large panel. I also look for ways to create designs that could not be replicated with traditional woodcutting techniques. And like many of you, I catch inspiration from other YouTubers, and I've seen a couple of people do some creative things with 3D printers, and it got me thinking about how that same approach could be used with a CNC and cutting out individual slices of a design and then stacking them on top of each other. So I decided to go with a gear for this particular project, but you could use any shape that you wanted to, uh, so long as it's cuttable within the area of your CNC. So the first thing I did was import a vector file of a gear into Fusion 360 and create a circle on the inside, which will represent the inside of the cavity. Now this design is gonna call for six different cutouts. Four are gonna be the middle pieces, which will have a completely hollow inside diameter. And there's gonna be a separate piece for the bottom and a separate piece for the top. More on that in just a second. The other thing I realized is that there's gonna be quite a bit of waste material in the middle. So I made a smaller concentric circle that was about four and a half inches in diameter and decided to put the Texas logo and I'll use that as a coaster set for something else. The first tool path I'm gonna to run is gonna cut the actual gear outline from my panel. The second one is gonna be cutting out the concentric circles for the outer diameter of the coasters as well as the inner diameter of the gear box itself. And then there's a unique cutout for both the uh, top piece and the bottom piece. What you're seeing here is the tool path for the top piece, which is gonna leave a little bit of material in the middle that'll just fit inside of the inner diameter of the uh, box when everything's said and done but it fits together nice and snug. I think it's like five thousandths of an inch smaller than the inner diameter of the box. So everything has a really snug fit to it. The bottom part is going to be cut from the second panel and is essentially going to be the inverse of what the top was. So we'll be removing material from the inside of the gear as opposed to the outside and leaving enough material to support the bottom of the box. The last tool path is going to be using a 15 degree bit tracing out the shape of Texas. Of course, you don't have to do this. You could do anything you wanted to. It could be a logo or it could be, you know, something else. I just chose Texas because that's where I'm from. As with most of my hardwood projects, I'm starting off with some rough cut lumber. In this case, I've got some wing gay and some hard maple. Now, if you don't have a jointer and a planer, that's totally fine. You can use some S4S lumber. You'll just have to pick up here in a second whenever I'm uh, done using my jointer and planer. Since I'm starting off with rough lumber, I'm gonna go ahead and use my jointer and my planer to get this stuff S4S. Now with the milling complete, I've got some S3S lumber that's ready to be ripped to final dimension. If you have S4S lumber, now you can pick back up and we can carry on together. This particular design requires a 10 inch panel and I want a one inch thick maple stripe in the center. So to cut my wing gay pieces, I'm gonna set my table saw fence at four and a half inches and rip a total of four pieces so that I've got two panels with a four and a half inch piece on the top and bottom of the one inch maple stripe for each of the boards. 
I know that might sound confusing, but if it doesn't make sense, just wait a few moments and you'll see exactly what I'm talking about here in a second. Once the four wing gave pieces have been cut, I then set my table saw fence to one inch and cut two maple strips that are gonna serve as accent stripes in the two panels. And here's how everything should fit together. Now it's time to glue up the panels using some parallel clamps and some wood glue. The goal is to get even consistent pressure along the glue seams, enough to have a little bit of glue squeeze out along the seam. You don't want to crank down like you're wringing water out of a wet rag, because if you apply too much pressure, you can get some bowing in the panel that'll cause problems down the road. Once both panels have had enough time to dry, I've run them both through the planer just to take off any excess glue residue and to ensure that they're both the same thickness. And we'll need to measure the thickness to set our Z axis dimension in the next operation. And to do so, I'll be using a very special set of analog calipers. These were given to me last year after my grandfather passed away at the age of 90. And out of the 12 grandchildren in the family, these were given to me. So it's my distinct honor and privilege to be able to take the measurements with these particular calipers. These thickness dimensions can then be plugged directly into the Z-axis dimension for all of our tool paths. Anytime I run a CNC path that's going to carve all the way through the piece of material, I always use this particular method where you put uh, painter's tape on the piece that you're going to carve and then painter's tape on your waste board. Then use a little bit of CA glue with some activator and then lock it in place and then it won't go anywhere. That'll allow you to cut through the entire piece of stock without any issues of it sliding or moving around. All right, I'm gonna let the CNC do its thing. I decided that I wanted to carve my logo on the top of the box, so I used a straight edge to find the center and let the CNC do the rest. Once all six pieces were cut, I headed over to my downdraft table with some 120 grit sandpaper just to take off all the rough edges and some of the milling marks left behind by the CNC. Unfortunately, I did have to do quite a bit of hand sanding just due to the intricate nature of this particular design. Prior to gluing up the gearbox, I experimented with a few different arrangements of the different slices of the gear design. The first was just a straight up gear, which is what I had originally intended on. Then I experimented with rotating the maple in a spiral pattern around and I thought that looked pretty cool. 
And then my wife gave me the idea to have it staggered a little bit so it almost looks like the gear was twisting. And I thought that was a pretty cool concept and something that was pretty unique. So I decided to play around with that particular design idea. And ultimately I landed on the design that you see here where it's just a very slight staggered pattern which gives almost a helical gear shape to the box. And I thought that looked pretty unique and cool. Now, if your pattern is not symmetrical, you may not have this same flexibility, but you've got a lot of design freedom here. To hold this new arrangement together, I'll be using my brad nailer, some parallel clamps, and then the dark version of Tight Bond 2. This will help mask the glue line on the darker Wingay wood once everything is said and done. I learned after my first round that if you apply the glue on the inside as opposed to spreading it around the outside, the glue squeeze out on the inside is much easier to clean off and is accessible to sanding. So I tried to avoid putting glue around the outside edges. I did use some brad nails just to prevent the design from turning as I was arranging it, but the clamps are what provide the pressure to keep everything nice and tight as the glue sets. While I was waiting for the glue to set, I turned my attention to the epoxy, which I was gonna use to fill in my logo and the Texas shape on the coasters. I used a battleship gray color, which in hindsight wasn't a great choice because once the wingay was finished, it was so dark that it just masked the color of this battleship gray for the epoxy. So if I was gonna do this again, I would definitely use a different color, but I used a syringe to delicately put it inside of the channels to make sure that I had good coverage within the logo and each of the Texas shapes on the coasters. After giving the epoxy enough time to cure, I then took my brand new Festool Rotex 150 and sanded off the excess epoxy left behind in the previous step. I do plan on doing a thorough review of the Festool Rotex 150 once I get a little bit more runtime with it. I'm holding my opinions because it's easy to see that this tool is high quality and does all the things that you'd expect it to do. But I think the more difficult question to answer is, is it worth the initial investment for the average woodworker? And that's something that I just need a little bit more runtime with it developed in my opinion. But if you're interested in seeing that content, make sure you're subscribed so that you can see it whenever I do release that content. To finish off this project, I used an aerosol-based polyurethane. I used aerosol-based because there was a lot of different nooks and crannies in this particular gear design that would have been hard to get with a liquid-based product. It did take a long time because you want to make light passes to make sure that the product doesn't pool, so this probably took three or four days to finish. So the final gearbox turned out fantastic. I ended up having to take the final shots outside in the sunlight because the wingay was so dark it was really hard to see inside of my shop with the lighting that I had. So I took some shots outside of my backyard and you can see the beautiful colors of the wingay contrasted with the maple that really contributes to a beautiful design. I do like the spiral shape to the gear, I think it makes it quite interesting. And it's also a very functional box that you can store various things inside of. My one regret with this particular build was the battleship gray color that I chose for the epoxy. It just gets lost in the darkness of the wind gay, so I should have used a lighter color, but you know, that's how you learn as a woodworker is by making mistakes. But I'd like to hear your ideas of what you think a cool box would be using this particular construction approach. Make sure you leave those in the comments section below so I can hear what you have to say. And if you go so far as to build something, make sure to tag me on that picture on Instagram using my handle below so that I can see what you come up with. I always enjoy seeing other people's creations. All right, see you on the next one.